will have the automatic and more I would say almost unthinking support of a large number of well-intentioned people in the social bureaucracy. The truth is that the best intentioned regulators cannot replace the family in its most important function, providing sources of order suffused by love. And tell you another story. Senator Philip Graham, has, uh, I, they're, holding up, they're holding up numbers to tell you, you know, how long you've got, five, two, one. I hate to tell the organizers this, but I'm enumerate. Um, the, the, uh, the, the most important function is providing order suffused by love. Senator Graham was giving evidence before, so was, was hearing evidence from the social uh, bureaucrat uh, in the US Congress. The a good man, and he said, you know, Senator, I love your children every bit as much as you do. To which the Senator replied, really? What are their names? <laughs> now, regulation is always a hit and miss, but it is most likely to make it work, work sensitively when it is local and shaped by the moral values of the local community. Increasingly in our current world, though, we face the laws and regulations shaped far away from us in remote bureaucracies, in national capitals, and in transnational and supranational levels. The policy makers of these levels are not, accountants to the vote, are not accountable to the voters. They do not have to present their policies to national interests, including the blocks of religious voters in these countries. They are accountable to themselves and to their own real electorate, which is the political classes of member states who appoint them to transnational office. Their directives become law in the dark and then presented to the government to the voters by governments as accomplished facts that cannot really be challenged. Now, I don't want to blame transnational bodies uh, for all of this. National governments have imposed many, maybe most, of the policies that are counter to the Christian beliefs and traditions of most people still in particular societies. But at least when these regulations stem from national governments, they have to fight domestic political battles in order to come into being. And even in these debates, the, the, um, and, and although the odds may be stacked against them, nonetheless, uh, the, the, there is the diversity, the ideological and religious diversity of the society has some impact. Now, because the lady is talking about science, I will try to, I will move ahead quickly. Um, in recent years, all kinds of bodies have expanded their powers over us. We have got UN treaties on subjects from the rights of children to maritime law, which give um, those bodies a basis for convening domestic politics. They have secured legal expansion of treaties through, through judicial activism. And they have established monitoring bodies to ensure that signatory countries fulfill the treaty provisions. All this sounds modest, but the hand reality is that a handful of unelected officials in remote places that uh, often lay out a kind of world political agenda. Uh, the, the American political scientist, Francis Fukuyama, pointed out there was a substantial flaw in this arrangement. He said, um, the problem, uh, he said Europeans, and he, he was distinguishing them from Americans, he had not sure rightly, Europeans believe that democratic legitimacy flows, flows from the will of an international community much larger than any individual has now legitimacy to existing international institutions which are seen as embodying it. The problem is that um, uh, the, the problem is that when we think that legitimacy is handed down from some willowy international level rather than handed upwards from concrete legitimate democratic publics, it invites abuse on the part of elites who are free to interpret the will of the international community to shoot to suit their own preferences. Now whatever we may think of such matters as children's rights, the regulation of political speech, the prohibition of blasphemy, they are plainly the stuff of domestic political debate. And such debate would expose weaknesses in what may initially look like reasonable reforms. Now, um, I'm suggesting that the majority of the people will often be on the Christian side with this debate, the majority of their rulers nationally and internationally on the post Christian side. But there is a very interesting development in recent years. And that is the arrival of people like Arnea Arigalfalachi, who describes us, described herself when she is dead as, as a Catholic atheist. She is a kind of patriot of the post-Christian society. She believes in the Christian values of the society, even when she could not bring herself to believe in the Christian God. One such 
can't say atheist, so to speak, was Kenneth Minow, the Australian political scientist who died a month or two ago. In his article, Crust, Christophobia and the West, he describes how the secular idealism that broke free of Christianity has now turned against its parent. It has evolved into a proselytizing secularism that seeks to banish religion from public life altogether. It is, in effect, an ersatz religion that competes with Christianity in offering a rival vision of human betterment to be achieved on a global scale by forging the peoples of the world into a single community based on the universal enjoyment of appropriate rights, is his definition. But religions rarely get on, and that version of human rights differs very sharply from the traditional Christian one. Yes, I my glasses, I've the wrong glasses too. Um, um, but, but we now see a situation in which um, uh, this uh, secular religion seeks increasingly to uproot what remains a Christian tradition from national law and custom within Western countries. We see a Christian dating agency in California sued because it would not match up same-sex couples. Catholic adoption agencies in Britain, which must now refer children to same-sex couples or close down, and so on. My final point. Christians need to re rediscover their skepticism of the world's principalities and powers. These include bodies like the UN and NGOs quite as much as they do nation states. Post-Christian liberals have invested the emotions they were once have devoted to God and religion in such bodies. They see them as world-saving institutions, and some Christians, not excluding the occasional Vatican spokesman, incautiously lend support to this mild heresy. But by their fruits we shall know them and their fruits include some very questionable social policies. They should be neither of criticism nor reform. They should not be condemned, they should be encouraged to move in the right direction, but they should be neither of criticism nor reform. I take it to be the purpose of this conference to propose such reforms and make such criticisms. And now we'll draw and ask Marina Maxman, who has a distinguished career, first of all in the Council of Europe, secondly as the representative of the Serbian government and who is now working for the uh, IRI, the International Public Institute, here in, in Brussels. Um, I think this is a wonderful example of the transatlantic uh, cooperation on moral and religious questions that I hope this conference is the beginning of. Uh, many of you.